Hey guys, it's Violet, and I'm here today to just do a little soft-spoken ramble and tell you a few stories, show you a few things, and hopefully you really like it. <laughs> Fingers crossed, that's what everybody hopes, right? Okay, so I don't really have a structure to this video at all. I haven't thought about it or planned, but I recently made a visit to Salt Lake City, Utah, which, if you're not from America, is a western state, um, very mountainy and kind of deserty, and it's very beautiful. And Salt Lake City is the home of the Mormon faith. Um, I was reading about Salt Lake City when, uh, before I was going there, and I read a book called Under the Banner of Heaven by John Krakauer, which I strongly recommend. It's a really good read. It's very sad, but it's very well written. John Krakauer's books are very dense, but it tells the story of, um, modern-day Mormonism and historical Mormonism, and it's just really entertaining if you like um, non-fiction kind of stuff told in an interesting voice. Um, oh yeah, so I went to Salt Lake City to visit my cousin, um, and I'm sorry if there are like other sounds that happen when I make a lot of videos, I'll try and work around them, but I'm just gonna see how it goes, I think. So I was in Salt Lake City. It was my first time ever going there. I am a Midwestern gal. I went to high school in Florida and enjoyed that, but I've spent, I don't know, I'm 23, lived in Florida for five years. I got distracted by that foot noise. I'm not that bad of wreck. Whatever, it's not important. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, yeah. I, uh, have never been there. I've been to California before, and Arizona, and New Mexico, and I've been to Wyoming, and Colorado, and Montana, and North and South Dakota, and Minnesota, and Wisconsin, and Michigan, and Indiana, and Illinois, and where else have I been? F Florida, Georgia, Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, Washington, D.C., Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont. Thus concludes the list of places that I have been in the United States that I remember. Um, oh my gosh, I'm being so rambly. So yeah, um, went to Salt Lake City, and I went to the Temple Square. Um, the temple, the Mormon temple in Salt Lake is the biggest, no, it's maybe not the biggest, but it's the like most important um, temple for Mormons. And it was really interesting to see. I have a lot of curiosity, and I was really excited to talk to some Mormons, and um, just they were all so nice. They were so friendly at the temple, and my cousin and I visited Provo, Utah to see Brigham Young University because I have been a fan of their improv comedy group, Divine Comedy, for a long time, and I wanted to go, so we did. And we met some super nice Mormon folks. They are as nice as the stereotype. I'm from Minnesota, which is supposedly a pretty nice place. I think it is. Way nicer. They were so nice. Um, but it was cool. You can't go inside the temple. You just can go around it, and there's visitor centers and people who can tell you about it, but you can only go in there if you have a recommend. That's what it's called, I believe. Singular, a recommend. It's a noun in that usage, which is kind of unusual linguistically. And um, you can go there, and if you get married in a temple, then that's better. 
because you're sealed eternally, I think. But the temple was very beautiful. It was very white. It was made out of a very white stone. And there are these lines that kind of draw your eye upward. And it's tall. And there are these, a lot of windows. And my family is Lutheran. So it was very interesting to kind of compare and contrast the um, different vibes of the churches there. Or, well, it's a temple. It's not a church. But I compared it to the kinds of Lutheran churches that I have been in my life, and they're not very grand. They're really not. I've been to Catholic services, Episcopal services, Anglican services, Unitarian services, and um, none of them were as grand as this temple. Mind you, you know, a temple is not a church, and you don't go there for services, as far as I understand it. Correct me, Mormons, if I'm wrong, please. <laughs> but, um, so, you know, it's not really a fair comparison, but it was very grand. Um, from the pictures. Um, and I had a good time learning about different faiths, and everybody was very friendly, so I am, um, really in a, a phase of spiritual questioning at the moment. Um, I don't think Mormonism is a, a good fit for me. There are a couple elements of it that I kind of can't get past with a lot of religions. I guess that's the case. Um, but... It really is interesting to consider everything, even if I sort of feel very, uh, rootless, religiously speaking. Um, not a very faithful person, apparently. <laughs> um, I enjoy lots of elements of the church, though, um, the beauty of the services, and I like to read the Bible, even if I don't understand, really, or accept I think the King James Bible is a very beautiful book. I went to a Lutheran church service this morning, um, and it was nice. It felt like getting back to my roots a little bit. That's what my family has been for a long time. Um, I don't actually have really friends who are religious. It's a very solo journey. I think everybody kind of engages with that question at some point in their lives, and for most of my life the answer was that I didn't really care or believe in anything, and I kind of still don't. Um, but I definitely am seeking, I think, and very curious. I haven't found a god to believe in yet, or a religion that suits me. But then sometimes it feels like I have, in some ways, you know. Like, I don't believe in God, exactly, but then, you know, I pray sometimes. I've heard it said before that prayer doesn't change things. Prayer changes you, and then you change things. So, in that sense, I find it to be a useful exercise. I journal as well. I don't know. I don't consider myself a spiritual person, though. Or a religious one. Just a curious one, you know? I think that, by and large, everybody has questions in their lives that pursue them, that, that seem of really vital importance, and that are very inescapable and hard to answer. The kind of questions that keep you up at night, but that you are embarrassed to talk about with your friends, because it feels intimate or stupid or intimate and stupid I think that's how I feel about my quest for God <laughs> or quest to prove that God isn't but I think that seeking out the answers to those questions even if you never find them can be very rewarding and it can lead you to do some interesting things like going to Temple Square in Salt Lake City and talking to Mormons and wondering and wondering and wondering and wondering and wondering and I think everybody should have a few secrets that they only share with their heart or their God or a couple thousand people online <laughs> don't tell anybody, okay? you keep 
this a secret? Sweet tea. Also, I recently rewatched The Force Awakens, and I am an enormous fan. By the way, I'm an enormous Star Wars fan. I'm not sure if I've talked about this before, but I am so... Anyway, so I like listen to the soundtrack a lot at work, and it's the thing that I'm probably the nerdiest about. Um, my friends give me a hard time sometimes because I have such strange hobbies. Um, I came out to my friends. Oh, sorry. I came out to my friends as um, a person who has ASMR, and um, they were very supportive. That was a while ago, and now we've sort of transcended that, and they just tease me about it. They'll be like, "Oh, what are you doing in there? Like, are your weird hobbies?" <laughs> sorry, if you heard that, I was playing. I wanted to show you guys these, actually, because I have, I wear lipstick in a lot of my videos because you, it's, it's a little bit better if you can to wear makeup on camera because otherwise you sort of look dead. So I thought that I could show you some of the makeup that I wear when I film. <laughs> I know this video doesn't make any sense. It's fun. So one of the things that I wear when I film is blush, and I never wear blush when I'm not filming. Um, I have this NYX one, which is in the color mauve, PB13. The packaging on NYX stuff is updated now because this is kind of old, but this is the color. I think it's nice. It's a really natural color, but um, it's important to do that so you don't look like you have like the early stages of the plague and you're just slowly like losing your face color and turning into like a like a dead person and then you should if you have light colored lips you can put on lipstick and um i brought three good ones depending on your mood and i've used all of these while filming at various points i can't remember I've worn some zany lipsticks in my videos. I think my zaniest one was that one where I was tasting something, tasting candy. I had this crazy pink lipstick on, and I'll link it below. It's a terrible video. Like, so noisy. I had this microphone that was just, had this really annoying hum. I look back on those videos, and I'm like, what was I doing? Like, why was I filming like that? And, it sounds like you're sitting right next to, like, a plane that's about to start. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is one of them. This is the, um, this is, okay, Revlon Coral Berry. This is an old favorite of mine, um, and, um, it's just such a classic. Okay, it's like a really pretty wearable coral color. that. I think it looks really cute with this shirt. It makes me feel like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. Don't you think? <laughs> yeah. It's um, just a pretty coral color. Then there's this one. This one is so cheap. This is from Ulta. The brand is Essence, which is a, as I understand it, a German makeup line, which is kind of cool. Um, it's in the color 5 Cool Nude. That's the color. And that's, oh gosh, it's hard to do things. I don't know how beauty gurus do anything. Go and be in focus. <laughs> I've worn this one down pretty far, but this is the one I wear all the time, day to day. I wear it at work a lot. Um, it just sort of looks like your own lips, but a little different. I'll show you. I'll take my lipstick off. Putting lipstick on feels very glamorous. Taking it off does not. If you're wondering 
Also, why I'm taking my makeup off with a Q-tip It's because I did not plan ahead <laughs> and grab Kleenex And I just have like a stack of Q-tips <laughs> over here <laughs> So they're just within reach <laughs> This is, um, so this is Cool Nude Um, this one looks a lot like my natural lips Cool nude for you. Here I am. Cool and clothed. But um, it's a pretty color. It just looks like my natural lips, but um, like consistent and a little bit deeper. Like one of those my lips but better colors. So, like this one is very wearable. And it's so cheap. The It's just a nice quality lipstick. And it was $3. Not even joshing you. There aren't that many colors. Like, I hate it when people put out a line of nude lipsticks or nude anything or skin-toned anything, and they're like, oh, it's nude colors. But then it's just like, they only have like two shades of it. I don't know. I think it's kind of dumb. You'd think if you had nude, you would, would want it to be nudes for every skin tone, but they're only like light pink. Like, not everybody's lips are that color. I guess you can find a different one, but it's like when you're shopping for foundation and stuff, there'll be like 8,000 shades of pale people, and there's like two options for people with skin darker than the color of toast. I do not understand it. I do not. Sam, I am. I don't. I dropped a Q-tip. It's the end of the world. Let me open my lipstick drawer. Okay, I don't have a drawer for lipstick. I don't, but I do have a lot of lipsticks. Let's see, what's this one? Okay, this one is Love That Pink. It's a Revlon one. I'm not going to put this one on because it's kind of a zippy color. This is not showing up very true to life. It's kind of a dark pink. Oh my gosh, never try and put on lipstick in a camera mirror. Very pretty, isn't it? It's like a fun pink color. I never wear this color though. Because it's, um. You know, I don't know why actually. I think that's sort of pretty. What do you think? Do you like this one or the coral one better? Mm. I like Revlon lipsticks, but I don't think they ever. They don't ever stay very long, you know? Oh, you know what I have that I can show you? Is this thing. These are makeup wipes. Um, these ones are called Spa Life Oxygenated Cleansing Facial Towelettes Cucumber Essence with multivitamins and minerals. Minerals. They're okay. Um, if you like to have products that take off your makeup that aren't liquid, like I usually use this stuff, something like this, like a cleansing water. These wipes are a pretty good option. And they smell nice. But the thing that gets me about them, though, is what they look like. Do you want to smell? The thing that gets me, though, is their big tagline is oxygenated. It's oxygenated. We oxygenated these. Okay, that's not a thing. How do you oxygenate something that's not a, like a liquid? You know, like, you can carbonate something, but you couldn't, like, carbonate a makeup towelette, you know? I call BS on that, I just do. Oxygen isn't listed as an ingredient on the makeup towelette box, and you know why? Because that's bonkers. That is insane. You can't list oxygen as an ingredient. 
people would look at you like, what planet are you from? Oh, but I was doing something. I'll just do this. Looking at myself in the viewfinder. So there they are. The natural violet lips. Let's get a lip balm. What's that you said? That doesn't look like a lip balm violet. That looks like a weird, terrible Easter egg. Fine, you're kind of right, but it's an EOS lip balm. Tastes like... Melons. It's okay. I moisturized you guys. I was gonna tell you something. Right. Ingredients lists. Speaking of ingredient lists, I have been watching these videos, and I will link them below because I'm forgetting the guy's name, but it's this man who gets war rations, like that they give to soldiers from around the world, and he, he gets them, like the canned boxes, like from World War II and Vietnam, mostly like from, there's not a lot from like 1944, like that kind of stuff, it's usually older or younger than that, because not a lot of canned goods from the World War II era have survived, but <clears throat> what he does he gets them and then he opens them and he shows you what they look like and then he tries them I mean, not like all of them like the stuff that's obviously rancid, he doesn't try but like it's, it was, it's just it's kind of good ASMR a little bit, I'm not gonna say that it's gonna tingle you or anything at least it didn't for me but it's so soothing, it has that kind of vibe so, I'll link it for you down in the down bar so you can see it but it's very cool to see what they what they put in cans and how weirdly long canned food lasts like that's unsettling I <clears throat> wow but the coolest thing about them are the accessory packs that come with some of the ration kits that are just things like coffee artificial creamer sugar salt um cigarettes, gum, toothpicks, like a spoon and stuff, all this interesting stuff that like goes along with eating and the things that you need to maintain your basic level of comfort. So like, you know, the army thought that people needed gum and cigarettes to take care of themselves in the field and like, what the heck do I know about that? Absolutely nothing. Maybe they did. But I just think that's so interesting. Like, I wonder, I assume he must have ration kits from, like, today times. Like, what goes in them? Because he said that they stopped including cigarettes in the 70s. Um, which I guess makes sense. I think cigarettes are kind of bad for you. But, um, some people really like them. I don't really know where I was going with that. What would you put in yours? If I had an accessory kit, it would probably be... I do really like coffee. I mean, that's bad for you too, though. And you don't, like, need it. But people have needs that go beyond, like, just their physical needs. Like, if a cup of coffee is, like, important to you, you should have it sometimes. Or, you know, I don't know if you're fighting in Vietnam and you want a cigarette, like, okay, I'm not gonna... <laughs> I'm not gonna judge you. I don't think I would judge anyone in Vietnam feel like I, that, why am I talking about this? Why, this is a weird video, you guys. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> is this what you thought this video was gonna be like? Every time I do something weird to my boyfriend, which is like constantly, I'm just like always saying weird stuff to him. I'll turn to him and I'll go, is this what you thought dating me was gonna be like? <laughs> eh. Other times we talk about God and coffee and lipstick maybe I would have lipstick in my accessory kit what color would I pick though? I would bring this one this is a Marc Jacobs lipstick, it's just a sample I got it uh, this was like a freebie when I bought something at Sephora and it is so pretty 
good it's tiny look how tiny it is <laughs> small so small <laughs> but it is such a pretty color oh my gosh i never get sick of this one i think i would like to do a whole lipstick video with like just like the camera looking down at all my lipsticks and stuff just talking about the colors and things i was proud of myself before i filmed this one i filmed the, the video before i filmed a uh, a role play anyway this is this color it is called kiss kiss bang bang <laughs> which is okay Isn't that pretty? This is maybe my favorite one. I think these lipsticks are like $30 though. You can't justify it. I don't know though, if you're having a bad day. It happens. You buy a $30 lipstick, I have a lot of makeup. I don't wear a lot of makeup, but when I do, I go hard. Right, so <laughs> those are some of the makeup that I wear. Um, in film, I showed you my lipstick and my blush. <laughs> the other thing I do is I powder um, on the camera with a light shining right in your face. You look like you just got out of um, like a vat of olive oil. So I use like a loose spun powder and I just go, go all over my face. like that. Did you get that? And then you don't look like an oil spill. Then I put on lipstick. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna wrap this strange video up and hope that you're having an amazing night and morning, afternoon, whenever you're watching this. I hope you're having a great time and um, I think you're wonderful and um, hope tomorrow is better than today. See you in the next one.